Hey guys and welcome back. Yep. We are still here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here whole the whole day. Um so we are ready for the next session. This is a great one. Okay. Um <laughs> he actually are going to talk about static well not us but <laughs> the speaker is going to talk about <laughs> static generated sites and equate that with performance how does it work and so on and our speaker is Debbie O'Brien so if you guys don't know she is the head of learning and uh, developer advocate at Next.js Next.js yeah this is awesome <laughs> she's very excited about it <laughs> yeah I use Next.js a lot. I, I started with Vue.js and then went to Next. I was using Next before that. I, I know, Marine, you lost, you're lost somewhere in there. But, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of Next.js. Uh, we, 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 we used it recently with a, a project, a, a startup project, and it gets you going so fast. It's really awesome. So um, she actually worked as a tech lead, a consultant with several clients. She has an impressive journey to reach where she is right now. And uh, well, we are going to dive directly into her session and she'll join us afterwards for Q&A. So now is the time to use your keyboard in that chat. It's yeah, Debbie O'Brien from the SJS. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go. All right. <laughs> Static sites, triple equals, great performance, especially with Nux.js. Welcome to Virtual Developers Conference 2020. My name is Debbie O'Brien. I'm head of learning and developer advocate at Nux.js. I'm a writer for Ultimate Courses and a teacher at Vue School, a Google developer expert, media developer expert at Cloudinary, and a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional. And you can follow me LinkedIn, Debbie O'Brien, or on Twitter, Debs underscore O'Brien. So what I will cover, how static sites work, the benefits of static sites, why you should use static sites, and some Nooks modules and tips to help you improve your performance. But right now, I'm going to take you on a trip way back in the past. Let's go back to the 90s. So this is a static site of the 90s, right? For those of you who have never seen this before, or who were born like in the late 90s or the 2000s even, are probably looking at this thinking, oh my God, that is the ugliest website I have ever seen in my life. And you know, yeah, probably in a way it is because it's using um, basically background images just repeated. The colors we had in those days were very limited. So that's pretty much all you could do. But this is the, probably the most iconic 90s website that is still online today, untouched, it is exactly the same as how it was built in 1996. Uh, absolutely fascinating. It's uh, called Space Jam. It's a film or movie um, that was created by Warner Brothers and includes Michael Jordan and Looney Tunes characters such as Bugs Bunny. Uh, one of the best movies ever created and definitely um, the movie that made the most money for a movie produced uh, with basketball. And the website that was created was just a website to go along with the movie but absolutely incredible. So all those planets are actually linked. You can click on all of those. And you probably don't even know where to click because um, the hovers and things like, you know, we didn't have so much control of things uh, back then. So yeah, you're gonna just have to like click over things and click them because it's not gonna be obvious that they're actually links. But this website is incredible. And uh, the reason I'm showcasing this is because it shows you a static side of the 90s really really well done i'm going to take you a little bit through the story of this to then help show you how static sites are the future so yes space jam when they first started this website um this is what we all should do we need to write things down so this is their actual notebook and what do they do they said right we're going to have graphical links as sponsors integrated in the site visual illustrations games and lots of fun stuff solar system so this is their plan and this is what i encourage you all to do if you're building websites today get out a piece of paper and pen and start writing things down. Don't just start straight away into a framework and then start coding and then figure it out as you go along. It can happen, it can work, but it's always uh, much better to write it down and just you know plan and architect things out properly. So just to show you a little bit about this website, and this is great, this is actually the original Space Jam website 
uh, planning and you can see how much is actually in the website. So the uh, top line is all the links, right? That's all your pages and inside them is all the kind of pages inside those pages, right? So you can see there's quite a lot of content there. And there's everything from trailer and video clips, filmmaker notes, animation, tech info, match the game monster, uh, Looney Tunes coloring book. Um, there's a lot of things in there, including um, interactiveness. So for a static side, there's a hell of a lot um, going on in there. So that's why I really encourage you to, to play around it with it and to kind of click on things because it's really, really incredible that this website built in 1996 is still functioning exactly as it should do uh, today, like 24 years later. And that, that's what's incredible. Actually, this was taken from the Rolling Stone magazine. This is from a couple of years ago, but it still stands to today. Even today, with its basic HTML, pre-broadband file sizes, and flash-free architecture, the site is easy to navigate, even on a mobile phone, the movie clips encoded in QuickTime are somewhat grainy, but still viewable. Nothing was designed to still work after 19 years, now 24 years. It was simply designed to work. Now I love that. It was simply designed to work. And I think that's um, how we should be designing. Obviously, nowadays, you design things to work, um, but you never think like, oh, in 20 years time, is this still going to work? We're kind of um, designing things that we're seeing that the technology is, is leaving us quicker than what we've created. And for those of you who ever worked in the Flash times and created a website in Flash, Flash never made it onto the iPhone, for example, and then was like, you know, Flash died. So anyone who had a website in Flash had to change and, you know, create a new one. So it's incredible to see like that a website still has passed through all those moments of technology, what's changed and it's still functioning and still exactly how it was today, still works perfect. And here's a really cool example, right? So there's like the browser icons. So if you're tired of that glowing N up in the corner, change it to our hyper cool spinning basketball, right? I, I made this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Unfortunately, this only works on a Macintosh running Netscape. Sorry, Windows users, right? Now this is cool, because some of you out there are probably going, Netscape, what's that? So um, yeah, Netscape was a browser, one of the first browsers, it's what we all used, and uh, had an N. Uh, as its logo, and um, you could basically change that um, to be a spinning basketball. Now that's just cool, but what's cool is the fact that that website has outlived the browser. Um, a browser has come and gone, doesn't exist anymore, but that website still works and still stands today. And probably the only thing that doesn't work on the website is the fact that you can't change the browser's uh, icon that doesn't exist anymore. So I think that's just that's really, really cool. And yeah, it has like cool things like a trivia quiz. So you can, you know, see what rival calls bugs a long-eared galoot. And, and, you know, you can choose your answer. And if you get the answer correct, um, it goes through to, to the next round and stuff. Again, interactive, a static site, brilliant. Really, really cool. Um, and I love this. Uh, 404, no? Well, we've got no idea how you got here, but you've discovered a now empty page of information. Congratulations. Now please go somewhere else. Thank you. And, and what I love the most is that the footer is right up there because, you know, we didn't have like the view heights. We weren't able to put it at the bottom. We weren't able to say, hey, you should be down there. Um, we didn't have enough content. The footer just stayed there. That was perfectly normal. Um, again, amazing backgrounds. Um, and yeah, as you can see, all the links, all the planets there have now turned into links on a side navigation. Uh, that's all created through frames. Oh, do you remember the frames days? So yeah, again, Highly encourage you to check out the website, click around and, and really just get a feel for how things were created in the 90s. Uh, inspect the code, you'll see all those beautiful tables. Just, just, you know, incredible. But I wanna take you a little bit further now into the future and I wanna um, just jump and show you something that kind of is connected. So uh, recently, uh, this year, they released Lighthouse 6. Now Lighthouse 6 is the Chrome um, dev tools for checking your performance, right? So we had a lot of major changes with the Lighthouse performance testing and that kind of made your website like it used to be performant and now it's not so performant. You need to kind of, you know, improve things a little bit. So Lighthouse 6, what changed? So before uh, the first content for paint was what 20% and that got reduced down to 15%. Uh, really important was the largest content for paint. So the largest thing that needs to be painted before um, the user can kind of, you know, a feel for the page is worth 25%. That's quite a lot. 
and the total blocking time total blocking time is 25 percent. so if something is blocking your page from loading like a lot of javascript or css or etc then that's going to really affect your performance by 25 percent. so really really incredible and time to interactive has actually reduced so that used to be 33 percent. it's gone down to 15 which means you know, people don't need to click straight away. They need to be able to read something, they need to be able to see something, and that's more important. So all this is kind of um, just being, you know, released uh, recently, and they're the new changes, and it's made so that, you know, it's better for the user to be able to use your website um, much easier, much quicker, etc. Now, what's cool is that, you know, 1996, when they built Space Jam, um, obviously they didn't even have tools to be able to do a lighthouse test to check their performance. And 24 years later, Space Jam is scoring 100 in performance. And I think that's absolutely just incredible. For me, that's like, you know, wow. To think that um, 24 years later, they're still one of the most performant websites in the world, right? Um, yes, it's a static site, so that obviously helps things. Their first content will paint 0.3 seconds, time to interactive 0.3 seconds, and a total blocking time of not, not. Get that on your website and wow, incredible. Largest content will paint 0.7 seconds. So they've done an absolutely amazing job. And seriously, like kudos to these guys, Donald Buckley, Darren Lynn Weiss, Michael Tritter, Jen Brown, and Ad Andrew J. Stachler. And like, you know, um, incredible at the time. They're working for Warner Brothers, they're asked to this side, and they put a lot of a lot of coolness, a lot of fun vibe into it. And little did they know that, you know, so many years later this website would be talked about shown at conferences, um, written about in magazines, and, and still be there and be like, you know, something that the world is looking at when it comes to, to web design. So really, really incredible. And it's actually quite funny that um, they didn't even realize. So obviously they made the website to go along with the movie. The movie made loads of money. It was a huge success. And then it came onto the next movie and, you know, you just make another website. And, and it was about 2001 when Warner Brothers stopped making movies or stopped, stopped making, um, websites for the movies and they kind of outsourced it to other companies. So they kind of just forgot about what they had online and didn't really, you know, worry about it. And it just kind of like disappeared. Right. And it was a couple of guys who were um, reminiscing over the, over the movie Space Jam. They were like checking it out and they said, Oh, let's like, you know, Google and see what's written about it. And they found the website and then they used a social media uh, Reddit and they kind of put, Hey, look, this website is still online. I can't remember how many years later it was, um, but more than 14 years anyway. And they said, wow, this website is still online. Incredible. So at that time, um, people started like, you know, going to the website and checking it out. And probably for some, it was the first time they'd seen it because they might not have had an internet in like 1996. And um, yeah, they were all checking it out. They got like 500,000 visits in a day. Warner Brothers got a little bit kind of worried, you know, because everyone's coming to this website that's really not up to modern day standards, etc. And they were like, Oh my God. So they shut it down to, <laughs> to kind of avoid any embarrassment, I think. But luckily one of the guys who was still working there, I can't remember if it was Donald or Michael or Andrew, but he was still working there and he kind of went, Whoa, hang on a minute. You need to put that website back up. There's no way you should take that down. So they put it back up. So thanks to the fact that they were still working there, that website got put back up again. Um, otherwise we might never be looking at this talk with this, with this website in it. So yeah, luckily it was put back up and, um, and it's still there and that's absolutely just fantastic. So yeah, kudos to these guys for some great, great work. So when we talk about 90s, um, people used to think the static, the websites were very static, probably because they hadn't found uh, Space Jam. But yeah, you know, they kind of went, no, we need a bit more. We need, we need to kind of move on with the times. So it was kind of time for server-side rendering. So SSR came on and people said, right, we need to now build everything with server-side rendering. And server-side rendering allowed a lot of things like sharing your code between pages. And this was really important because before we were using frames and frames was a nightmare. It was a nightmare to work with. So being able to share like code, like footers, headers, navigation, et cetera, between pages, that was a real plus. Um, getting data from a database. So instead of having all that code, all that content in mixed in with the code and stuff, it was much better than we could use a database. And that database would then populate the page on the server, so we'd go to the server, we'd ask for everything we need, we'd get it, and then it would server rendered HTML to the client. So it was just that little extra step, right? Instead of having the HTML already rendered, you had to go to the server, you had to get all the stuff from the database, um, and then on the server, you'd render that HTML and send it back. 
but we still had great search engine optimization because you know everything was being done on the server so um that worked still just as well as it did on the on the, on the original static side html page so yeah our server side rendering michael went you know what yeah that sounds good to me i'm kind of yeah i could go with this i get you we could move to server side rendering but steady on michael it's not all good news so um, with server-side rendering, you have to call the server on every page. So that can be a little bit annoying because you know, you're constantly calling the server, you're constantly refreshing every page you go to. And that kind of kind of uh, causes like minor page flickers. It's like you're refreshing that button all the time, like a hard refresh. Um, I mean, we were used to that. That was normal back then, but you know, nowadays if someone is, if the page keeps flickering, you're looking at it going, seriously, you're flickering my page, why? Um, you need a server. Uh, for server-side rendering and servers cost money because you know they need to be plugged in and maintained and so yeah you need a server and I hate paying for things so I'm completely for the non-servers serverless technology for me it's fantastic one of the main reasons you don't have to pay for it so yeah server-side rendering you need to pay and it's not as performant like I said um it's not I'm not saying it's it's not performant it's just not as performant as a static site because you do have to have that extra let's go to a server um connect to a database and then like send it back render at html so there's that extra step and obviously that's going to like you know take a bit of time compared to something that's already there and yes when server-side rendering first came out the front end code back was mixed together because you didn't have um like what we have nowadays such as nuxt for example we can now do server-side rendering in nuxt but at the time when this first came out you couldn't so you had like a uh, php and you had like the CSS mixed in with the PHP. So you have front end developers who have to now understand PHP and you have back end developers who are now looking at all this CSS inside their code and kind of going, Oh, what is this? What's going on? So yeah, it's not the best developer experience and um, front and back code mixed together is, is never really ideal. So along came the single page application and this was a great time when they first came out. It was like, wow, this is like a game changer completely. Uh, we can now share components across pages in the front-end world. Um, this is fantastic because you could share header, footer, but also a button, uh, a card, anything. And this is really, really cool. And your front-end code was separate. Now, this is, for me, the most ideal because now I can just concentrate on my front-end. and I don't have to worry about the back-end language or understand it or, or know what it's doing. I just have to worry about front-end. That's really, really important. With single page applications, there was a faster navigation. So going from one page to the other was really, really fast. Um, it worked super fast and you had no page flickers, mainly as well because you only have one page. So it's kind of, yeah, when people first heard single page applications, they probably thought of the WordPress website that just goes all the way down and it's just one page and you scroll down. That's not what it is. Um, you're still clicking to go to other pages, but they're like not really other pages because really what's going on is that, um, what's inside the middle of the page. So you have your header and footer that's kind of staying the same, your navigation is staying the same, but in the middle of it, you are basically um, rehydrating that with new content. So it's just kind of the JavaScript, basically uh, changing the DOM and adding the new um, content, basically. So it's like one page that's just constantly being uh, rehydrated each time. So yeah, uh, no page flickers because you're actually not leaving that page ever, even though it looks like you are because the route is changing and it's kind of like, kind of like magic how it works it's kind of cool but yeah so yeah everything is done on the client side rendering so in the browser the javascript is just constantly um making that new page or making it look like you've got a new page it's all being done there in the client side in the browser so um, no server is, is actually needed to to do all that work so yeah michael's ready to sign on this one he's like okay i'm ready to sign this is it this is cool this is good this is the one this is the one let's change our website let's build a single page application but Michael, slow down. Things are not always as good as they seem. So with single page applications, the initial page load is quite slow. Um, because remember, you have all that JavaScript has to be downloaded for the whole website. So it's not like just giving you the JavaScript for that specific page. You need to download the whole JavaScript of the entire site. And then once it's downloaded, then it's really fast. But the initial page load is quite slow. You only get a simple HTML page. So if you've ever seen a single page application and inspected the code, there's nothing there really. Uh, you just get a div ID equals up. And then it's a JavaScript that actually puts all that code inside it, all that content, all that other components, et cetera. 
but you're just getting a simple HTML page. So yeah, it renders the page on the client side after the JavaScript loads, which basically means it's not ideal. It's not great for search engine optimization. Now, some people say Google can crawl um, JavaScript and that's, that's all good and well. Uh, but if you have an error in your JavaScript, you're gonna have problems and not all search engines can. So depending on where your market is, you might not be only targeting the, the Google market. Um, I'm sure in the future, they'll all be able to crawl JavaScript and that won't be a problem. But at the moment, um, I don't know if you'd sell it very well to a marketing team that you're gonna build a single page application. I think marketing teams hate JavaScript frameworks because of single page applications. So that's uh, one of the problems and one of the reasons. And it's not that great for performance. Again, it's not that it's bad, but remember it has to load all that JavaScript up front and that's kind of like a, a blocker. So that doesn't help performance at all. So where does that leave us, right? Um, that kind of just basically goes us back in a circle. Static sites are back, you know, we've done the static sites to SSR to SBA, and we're back now at static sites. We've done the whole, the whole circle of the planet or the circle of the basketball, and we're back. Why are static sites back? Well, we have free hosting, which means it's cheaper. I mean, it's cheaper because it's free, right? You don't have to pay for um, hosting. So many of them are free, such as Netlify, Versal, um, Azure Static Web Apps, and there are others out there, and you can host your website for free. Um, it's a pre-rendered page, so it's much faster. So you're building everything at build time. You're generating your website at build time with a static site. So the static site, how it works is um, you generate it, and then you like you know send it up to your hosting, and that's it. It's done. So there's nothing going on after that. It's, it's just created. Um, so yeah, you have that page already ready. You don't have to go to a server and do it, and it doesn't have to be done um, in the browser. So that makes it much faster. And obviously then, no servers needed, which makes it safer because you've got less possibilities of hacking, uh, less possibilities of, of things happening like on server-side rendering, for example. And it's got excellent search engine optimization because everything is there, everything's already there. It's just like there, it's just HTML files. It's ready, it's cool. And of course, it gives excellent performance because everything is already rendered, already there, easy to crawl. And my favorite one of all, it's greener and it reduces the carbon footprint because of the no need of servers, we are helping the environment. And I think that's a really, really cool thing, especially seeing as we've lived in these times of COVID, we've seen during the lockdown, the impact of shutting the world down for a couple of months and how that's improved our environment, um, the beaches, the clearer water, uh, the trees, just everything has just been improved because of, you know, shutting down um, everything that we've had to shut down over those few months. Going greener and just trying to protect that environment is, is definitely something we should all uh, keep in mind and at least try to do when possible. So as you can see, Michael's like, you know, yeah, this is it. I'm going to sign this one. Uh, you sold me on this and not just me, the whole of the Looney Tunes are on board and they're ready to come along and build static sites again. Uh, going back to being greener, and this is something, like I say, it's really, really important, especially to me after traveling to Antarctica in January and seeing the vastness and the beauty of Antarctica and that, that we could destroy that one day and people might never you know, see what I saw. Um, we really have to protect it. The IT sector already consumes an estimated 7% of global electricity. That's just crazy. The IT sector, 7% of global electricity. Um, that's just crazy. I actually this year um, deleted all my old websites that are hosted on server, all my WordPress websites that are not really being used anymore because they're actually um, taking up electricity. They're taking up space on a server somewhere um, for no reason. So I, I got rid of them and converted everything to Nook static sites. And uh, now it's, it's a lot more greener. So yeah, I encourage you to do that as well. Uh, to give you an example, a server-side rendered page, um, this web page is dirtier than 70% of web pages tested, and it's 1.63 grams of CO2 is produced every time someone visits the web page. So if you have a massive website, um, just think about that a little. Now, I do know that sometimes you need server-side rendering. I get that. And I'm not saying that you know static sites are the only solution. I'm just saying that sometimes you don't always need to have server-side rendering, and maybe just kind of think about that first. And yeah, with a server-side rendered site, nine trees, the web page emits the amount of carbon that nine trees absorb in a year. So think of those pure trees that you're, yeah. Oh. Um, Space Jam, for example. 
Space Jam web page is cleaner than 95% of web pages tested. So yeah, 24 years later, and they're already ahead of the game when it comes to being greener. Only 0.05 grams of CO2 is produced every time someone visits the web page. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, yeah, but that's built in you know, pure HTML and we now have these amazing frameworks like Nuxt and Vue, and we're not gonna go back and do just HTML. I get you, I hear you, you're right. So um, I also tested the Nuxt website. And just to show you, uh, our web page is cleaner than 72% of web pages tested. So even with a framework, with JavaScript framework, and with a lot kind of uh, going on, a lot of JavaScript, a lot of CSS, a lot more colors and styles that were not in, you know, the likes of the 1996 website, we're still 72% um, better than most web pages. And it's only 0 0.45 grams of CO2 every time someone visits the web page. So again, obviously, the, we could be better and we can try and improve that, but it's still, we're in green and that's good. So if you're in red, uh, start getting worried and see if you can do something about that. And yeah, we need three trees. Actually, Space Jam was one. So um, it's better than nine. You know, it's not perfect, but at least we're a step ahead of, of, um, of where we used to be when, you know, server-side rendering was the one that we were using. So performance matters. And um, I want to show you a website that um, is actually a, a friend of mine that does one of the Nooks and Ambassadors actually created this website. And it's very, very good. Um, and they've worked very, very, very hard on trying to be the most performant that they can. But it's a server-side rendered uh, website. Therefore, they've got 82 in performance. Now, as I said, it is not bad at all. It's really not bad. They've worked really, really hard to get that score. But with server-side rendering, um, sometimes it's just not that easy to get 100. And if you're out there and you've got a 100 score in your server-side rendering, please like send me the link. I'd love to see it. Um, but I know these guys have like, worked so hard to try and get as much as possible and they've just like not been able to. Um, so yeah, again, those marketing scripts are always a, a problem when it comes to performance, etc. But just to kind of show you the difference um, with Nuxt, with absolutely no extra work, with no contacting a specialist in performance, not paying anyone to even spend time actually trying to improve things, just by using Nuxt static sites, the Nuxt website is 99 in performance. And that's just, that's just cool. So that's something I'd like you all to just kind of think about and take on board that, you know, you can get an incredible, huge performance by using the right technology. Nook static sites will, will just give you that out of the box. So what about content, right? You know, we talked about before the, the databases and server-side rendering, and that's how they got all the content. So what can we do now um, in the front-end world with Nook static sites? How can we get our content? So we use what's called headless CMSs, right? Now, headless CMS, Kind of has some confusion. Okay, we're gonna take the head off, right? We've got no head anymore. What does that mean exactly? It's kind of just um, a nice way of saying your front-end code and your back-end code are separated. So your content, your database, that's separate to your code. And it means you can change it at any moment. They're not um, intertwined. So you could have um, one CMS today and tomorrow change it to a different one and it shouldn't affect anything. You just have to make a call to that other CMS and then that's all good. So it's about being able to change. And just the same as the front end, you could just change from view to Nuxt and it wouldn't affect the back end. That's like not gonna change at all. And that's what being headless means. It means it's not connected to each other. So yeah, Nuxt content, uh, if you haven't used it already, this was released recently. It's absolutely amazing. It's a Git-based headless CMS. So if you're a developer and you just wanna get content out there, this is gonna save your life. This is fantastic, it's brilliant. No setup needed, you just, just works, brilliant. Um, Strappy, another excellent example of a CMS, Prismic, Storyblock, Sanity, and there's so much more. I didn't put them all in there, um, but there's a hell of a lot of headless CMSs out there, and there's an easy way of getting your content onto your static site. So with static sites, you need to generate your site, right? So yeah, this is true. Um, we have a command called Nuxt Generate, so you run the generate command. And what this does is, first it builds your website, and then it generates all the static um, pages for your website. So before, you know, people used to say to me, yeah, but it's gonna take ages because, you know, I made a simple change. I just added a full stop into my content and now I have to rebuild my whole site and all those images and everything. And at the time I was like, yeah, you do, but it only takes, you know, three minutes, so don't worry about it. But now with the uh, latest version of Nux, um, everything is much faster and much smarter because the generator has become smarter. And what that means is 
once uh, you change the content, um, you don't need to rebuild because the build is cached. So the first time you build, it's going to build everything. It's going to go through Webpack, it's going to build it, and then it's going to cache that build. So now if you go along and you only change the content, it only generates the content. What that means is um, you haven't changed a view page, you haven't changed the CSS, you haven't changed any images or anything. So it kind of doesn't need to go through Webpack. It just needs to generate the actual content, which is just the basic you know, text. So this could be coming from your API or it could be in your content folder and your markdown files. You modify those markdown files and then you generate again and it's super fast. It's like, it's seriously seconds because it's not going through Webpack anymore. So yeah, generating your site literally takes seconds. So it's not a problem. Uh, it's brilliant with Nuxt. Uh, Nuxt static sites are just fantastic. So to give you a, few, a little example of um, the kind of websites that are being produced using static sites. Now there are quite a lot. I only took um, a few small examples just to show you, but there are many, many out there that are built on static sites. So our own website is actually a static site. And um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of content in here. Uh, there's a search functionality. Um, and just play around with it, you can see. And, and we're, it's gonna get even better. We're working hard on this to actually make this website even more cooler and better. But yeah, this is a static site and it's, um, we regenerate the content every time we, we change things and it's, it's super fast on doing it. Uh, another great example is GitHub Stars. So if you haven't seen the GitHub Stars website, a uh, really, really cool example of a Nook static site. You can log in. You can see my face up there in the corner. That's me logged in to this website. So it's going, calling an API, logging you in. And then you can search your stars, the countries, the contributors. And uh, then you can nominate a star. So you can actually go to the nominate and you can nominate me. Yay. No. Um, yeah, I was already nominated. I was like, oh my God, I got nominated. I'm going to be up there one day. But you guys, hang on. Keep, keep my place up there warm. Uh, but yeah. So you can nominate um, at the star live there on, on a static site. And that's just brilliant. And that just shows you the interactiveness that can happen on static pages. Um, view Dose is another one. So View Dose, if you want to hear about things that are view and Nooks related, there's um, articles released every week. And uh, yeah, this, this site just, just generates it. And if you, this is an, an amazing example of a static site because it's super fast. So if you go to that website and actually just start clicking around, it's incredibly fast. It's brilliant. They've done an amazing job. Um, another great example of a Nook static site. And this one I just wanted to show you because I thought it was cool. Again, uh, static sites are faster. And um, this, uh, this one, Eurojets, uh, where do you want to fly to? Just take that little jet and fly off and fly to static sites because static sites are faster. So another great example uh, of a website built with static sites. So yeah. Eva Michael's saying static sites are faster. Like, you know, you got to run for this. This is the one you got to, you know, static sites of the future. It's brilliant. So a couple of Nuxt modules to uh, help you on your way. So um, PWA, Nuxt PWA, uh, if you want a progressive web app, uh, this is a great, absolutely great module. This will give you a service worker. It'll give you a manifest JSON and it will give you search engine optimization friendly metadata. And it's already like done for you, right? So you just kind of have to install this module. There's a couple of little things you have to do. Like you've got to add one icon at 512 pixels by 512 pixels, and then it will generate all the other app icons for you. Fantastic module. Next, Cloudinary. Uh, if you've never heard of Cloudinary, Cloudinary is amazing. Um, it's free until you get to a certain amount of users so, or visits. So basically, I encourage you all to sign up and start using it. Uh, especially developers for your own projects, brilliant. And what Cloudinary does is you can put your images up there and then it kind of gives you like a URL generation. So you've got this URL and then you can add things into it to kind of like have size optimization. So you can just change the URL and it's gonna modify that image for you. It's gonna give progressive images so that you have like, um, and it's gonna order to take the optimized format. So you go to uh, Chrome browser, for example, and it'll give you a WebP image. I uh, go to Internet Explorer and I'll give you a JPEG image, for example. So it really, really helps your optimization. And when you do your Lighthouse score, you're gonna see that Cloudinary has really, really helped improve your performance thanks to that. So really, really encourage you all to check that out. Sitemap module. So we have a sitemap module where you can, it adds the static routes to each sitemap and it even supports internationalization routes. So this module is great. Or you could go back to the 90s and do what ja um, Space Jam did and create a sitemap like back in the days. Um, I think the module is a lot easier. We have a robots module. So this um, is a Nuxt.js module that injects the middleware to generate a robots.txt file. Again, fantastic, really easy to use. 
Tailwind CSS, if any of you know me, you know I am in love with Tailwind CSS. Tailwind CSS is a utility first framework. Absolutely fantastic. I have tested out so many frameworks and sorry to the others. I'm sure you're great. I know you're great, but I absolutely just love Tailwind. I think it's just um, really has helped me in large projects with performance and just with teams as well as in ease of use of, of, um, of building websites. Zero configuration to start. This is the module uh, with Nuxt. Purge CSS included for minimal CSS. Uh, use the latest CSS features, which is always great. And you can reference your Tailwind config in your app. So brilliant module, encourage you to use it. If, however, you don't want to use Tailwind because you've already got like, you know, Beautifier and other amazing library, that's fine. Um, but try and use Purge CSS so it removes unneeded CSS with ease. So you're not loading all that CSS that you're not actually using. Um, so yeah, Google Analytics. Uh, again, another fantastic way of seeing how your website's doing, and that's a module can be added. And uh, we've Google, Google Analytics integration for Nuxt.js. Now I know you're kind of saying, that is a lot to take in. It's like, are you getting all this? Are you getting all this? You're sort of saying, oh my God, yeah, yeah. Hang on a moment. I know it's a lot, sorry. And there's more. Yeah, couple of performance tips, are you ready? So analyze your bundle. So this is really important because like, you know, sometimes you're shipping code, you're shipping um, so many things onto your code and you don't even know what you're doing and you kind of have no idea and you're kind of worried about, oh, my performance is not good, why? So if you use yarn build analyze, so this is in Nux, you use yarn build analyze and it's gonna analyze your webpack build. So it's gonna give you this uh, beautiful chart where you can actually see what's going on there. And you can see, for example, if I was to look at this example, I'd be kind of very worried about chart.js and I'm kind of thinking, wow, Chart.js is loading Moment.js and it's loading every single language on the planet. And we don't support every language on the planet. So we need to do something about that. Now, if I don't have access to Chart.js to basically uh, remove all what's inside it, I can use bundle phobia to kind of like give me an idea of how big that library is. 430 KB is minified. What? Seriously? So this is going to like, you know, show me how long it takes to load. Uh, what's included, etc. And at the bottom, it also kind of gives you ideas of other similar libraries so that you can kind of say, ooh, there's a different library that's a lot lighter and I could use that instead. So Bundlephobia is a great tool. CSS overview. So this is recently introduced into the latest version of Chrome. So if you haven't updated and seen this, you really should check it out. CSS overview is fantastic because you can actually see, you know, like your colors. Are you doing like 50 shades of gray? Or have you got all the colors? So these are our next colors. I think we're doing pretty good. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, and it gives you font info, unused declarations, and media queries. And I'm sure they're going to like make this even better and you know improve it with other stuff. But definitely, it's well worth checking it out and just keeping an eye on you know your style rules and especially your colors and just you know what's going on in your CSS. Modern mode. So in Nuxt, you can actually use the command yarn generate dash dash modern. And by doing that, it's going to generate um, two bundles: a modern one and another one for those browsers that are not so modern. And what that means is then when you come to Chrome, it's going to load down, load less JavaScript. So it's going to be much faster to load. Whereas if you go to uh, Internet Explorer, for example, it's going to have to load all those polyfills and all those extra JavaScript that needs it to get that website running. So the modern um, uh, bundle is fantastic. Just be careful of it in developer mode because it does take a little bit longer because you're generating another bundle. So I would yeah, kind of use it only on like on your production um, ready one. So yeah, I know that's kind of like, it's a lot to take in and I'm hoping it's not going in one ear and going out the other. Otherwise I'm going to have to like, you know, check and see if it's still in there. Uh, but yeah, so it's a wrap, right? So just wrapping up static sites are here to stay. So, you know, uh, space jam was created 24 years ago. It's still here to stay. Um, I don't think the others are going to live as long as things like space jam. So build your sites so that they are here to stay too. And just in case you're worried, um, there's now a Twitter bot, that is actually checking every three hours to make sure the Space Jam website is still up. So this has been going on for quite a few years and uh, basically it's gonna, yeah, it sends out this bot and it says the Space Jam website is still online, looks like the Space Jam website is still there and every three hours it checks that. So the Space Jam website is not going anywhere so you can follow on Twitter to make sure it doesn't go anywhere either. And again, as I said, it's a wrap. So put performance first, really, really important. Uh, static sites, triple equals great performance. So make sure you're, you're building static sites or at least, you know, look into it and try to make it work. Remember with Nuxt, if you've already got a single page application or a server-side render application, you can easily change it to a static site 
uh, just by changing in the Nux config and you can literally just put target static, uh, make sure it's in mode universal, not mode SBA, and then just use the generate command. That's it, that's all you gotta do. Really simple, so I, I encourage you to check it out and make sure you see that you'll see the difference in performance. And there, uh, yeah, spoiler alert, Space Jam 2, they said it's coming out in 2021. I don't know if plans have changed due to COVID, but wouldn't it be amazing if Space Jam 2 was created, the new website, as a static site with Nux. That would be incredible. I mean, they might, they talked about, wouldn't it be cool to create it just as the basic HTML, like back in the day and try and use frames and try and recreate it the same. Um, I would love to see them create it with, uh, as a static site with Nux and kind of see the differences of how the technology has evolved, but try and still get that same great performance and that same great results. That would be really cool. So my only question for you right now is, are you Nux? I hope you all are. Nux, static sites. Thank you very much. And yeah, my name is Debbie and uh, I've created a, a blog post on the Nuxt, on creating a blog post on Nuxt content. So do check that out. And seriously, thank you for watching and please don't forget to give feedback. Bye. Hey, we're back and we got back, Debbie right. with us. Yes, hey Debbie. Hey everyone. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, um, Debbie, to start with, this was a great session. Uh, we are going to get into it in a bit. Um, but uh, because we didn't have you at the start, you can go ahead and talk a little bit about yourself so our viewers um, give them an introduction and what you do exactly at Next.js and so on and so on. Okay, so hey everyone. Yeah, sorry, I'm on my holidays. So I'm in a hotel bar and the that's internet okay. is not great. So that's why I couldn't do the talk uh, in, in the bar live because they probably wouldn't. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm Debbie. I work at Nuxt.js. I'm, I'm head of learning and developer advocate. So basically my job is to make sure that Nuxt is easy to learn, that everyone can come on board and, and start using Nuxt and try and create materials and demos and everything to basically help Nuxtify the world. That's my, that's my mission. Um, and yeah, I hope you liked the, um, the presentation and if you have any questions, uh, I'm here, so let me know. Well, um, so far in the chat, we don't see, um, we don't have any questions. Hey, viewers out there, this is the time. <laughs> we have Debbie with us live, <laughs> so if you have questions, the live chat is still going on, you can throw them there. Um, personally, through the session, I love how, first, I love that you had a, a shout out to Space Jam. That, that was awesome. We are getting some great shout outs today. Windows 95, Worms, and now <laughs> <laughs> Space Jam. <laughs> um, yeah. And I like how you equated like servers and, and the rendering part with, with the environment, because as developers, um, we work virtually. So oftentimes, we ignore that aspect that whatever we do, whatever we run, it has an impact whether we know it or not, there is a computer somewhere running this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it has an impact on the environment. <laughs> I love how you equated those things together. Um, personally, I've used an XJS. So if I'm not mistaken, for the static um, generated site, it's uh, you use the jump stack, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> use the, Again, a shout out to Space Jam. I, mean, I know that's not why the name is Jam, but it's there. So <laughs> yeah, it, it just um, kind of fits in there, doesn't it? It's just perfect. <laughs> it's just perfect, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've used Next.js. And if you, your goal is actually to um, Nextify the world and make Next as easy and as onboardable as possible, um, personally, I can say that it's it's working. <laughs> we've had yeah, um, yeah we've had students um, working. I was mentioning that before this uh, the session, we had projects um, like startup projects where we have to get going fast and um, develop fast, and we chose next. And uh, there were students who were not really that versed in uh, modern um, Vue.js, uh, React, and so on. They were not really up to up to par, and. Uh, threw them in next, so, literally, we threw them in next, like, go ahead, do <laughs> what you can. And they, they grasped it really quick. Um, it helps, it's so helpful, the layout, the, the folder structure. So you guys are doing a great job there. <laughs> cool. So and, and it's going to get even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, about that. Um, oh, we have a first question, but Cool. Uh, about that, uh, maybe maybe you're, you're already going to answer that since you're saying it's going to get better. So any any hints, any um, uh, sneak peek at what we might see in Next.js in the near near future? 
without um, being... well, <laughs> <maybe>. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's hard to say. So we're working on Nook three at the moment, and that's going to be released when it's ready. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> soon, but you know what the soon the soon means in developer world soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I know that they're working hard on it at the moment. And obviously, um, the aim is to try and have as many things working without like um, without breaking many things, right? Like you don't want to uh, yeah. have to have a massive um, go from, from Nux 2 to Nux 3 and it'd be a nightmare, right? Like like Angular does, right? We don't want to do that. I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, the question um, we had um, actually is uh, if you have for Nux any plans, to have per root option for to target static, um, so basically static pages, that would be super useful for websites that have a lot of pages. So you can say uh, which one of them should be using that. Um, so what do you think about that? Is this something being considered or a good idea? <laughs> per root per option root for target option. static. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what you. I don't know. I mean. You're basically saying only update one root because you changed only one root, for example. I'm guessing. Basically, um, basically I think it's trying to find like um, Sandeep. If you are here, you can throw um, additional clarifications for your question. But I'm gonna try, <laughs> and you'll be <laughs> uh, Basically, what I'm uh, what I think Sandeep means is um, when you have a website, you are not always using static statically generated pages for all of them. You are using it for some of them. So is there a way uh, maybe to have on a per root basis to specify that, uh, you know, for these pages, you should be using the, so trying to find a middle ground between server-side rendering okay. and static generated pages. I yeah, got it I right. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good job. So at the moment, you can only do that with um, single page application fallback, which basically means you can exclude pages to not be statically generated and they fall back into single page application, which is what I did for a booking engine for a hotel, for example, uh, where you don't want all the results. So the results pages fell into single page application, but all the rest of the site was static. So we do have that. But yes, um, some people do want the server side rendering because they still want the um, search engine optimization, etc. So yeah, I would true. say that's kind of an answer that might be answered in next three. Um, and you're going to have to wait for that answer. So it's, <laughs> yes, there's possibilities, but there's no definite solution yet. But things are being worked on. That's all I can say. Uh, okay, oh, so thanks. yeah, Sandeep gave some clarifications. I think I think you answered it during the, the session, maybe. Yeah. Maybe you missed that part, uh, Sandeep. It's about um, not having to re-render the entire site just because of one little change. And he's talking about a full full static site normally. So um, yeah. if yeah, so that's what he so meant. So basically, yeah, so basically you can you're only going to statically render the content. So the content is really quickly because it's just the content, but you're not going through a webpack. So it skips the whole webpack build, your build is cached, and therefore um, you're just generating content again. So from the latest version of Nooks, and, and it's a massive improvement for, for performance. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's possible. Everything's possible. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> everything, yeah everything's possible. That's, that's like something we like to say you know, as devs. We, yeah, we can do it. We, we, <laughs> it's yeah. possible. Uh, <laughs> another question from um, Maya Shavin. Uh, so what about image components for, for Next? Uh, image, optimized image delivery straight from us. I, I think that's what Cloudinary um, tries to address in a way um, um, yeah but we're, ac we're actually creating a, a image component um, that you can then use Cloudinary or another service if you want to or not use any um, so we're creating we're working on this at the moment so that's going to be um, when when it's ready <laughs> it will be out so you know soon um, but yes we will we are working on an image component um, it's, it's okay we, we are not looking for a timeline today but it's good to know that <laughs> You know, it's, it's being considered. Uh, yes, yes. It's in the works. So, it's actually uh, so, almost there. <laughs> to do's. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sandeep has a second question about, um, so if Google starts crawling the SPAs properly, like how would that affect SSR, um, server-side rendered, server -side rendered websites? Um, would they go away? So what's your opinion on that? If Google gets better with SPAs? Well, remember that it's not just that, that the single page applications also have the performance issue. If you have a massive site, you've got to download all the JavaScript needed for the whole site on the first initial load. And that's kind of making your, your users wait. 
for all that JavaScript to download. So I don't think single page applications are always the best solution for for everything. So I think I think there's always a mixture, right? I, I'm a static site fanatic, of course, <laughs> and I would go static site first, single page application for things that like I can mix in with my static site, or if it was like a a backend. Um, what do you call it, like a dashboard kind of thing, you know, that's fine in single page application. Um, when you're not considering the performance or, or you're not caring about search engine optimization, so it's perfect. And server-side rendering is still important for like a massive uh, online shop, for example. Now you can't build obviously an e-commerce site yeah. with static sites, but if you have a massive Amazon that's changing everything every second, then you, know, you don't wanna be generating so much. So everything has its place. But before, we always did server-side rendering because we always wanted uh, search engine optimization. And now you don't have to think that way. You can think static first and then go, oh, now this is not working for me. Yeah. Now I'll move in that direction. But no, yeah, I don't true. think single-page applications will take over. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true for almost all of the technologies. There are, there, there are so many things that come out. It's true that some of them die they die, they die out, so they, they phase out. and. They don't really get used, but things like SPAs, PWAs, which is still quite um, moving quite fast, and um, SSR, I don't think any one of them would just phase out. I think, like you said, it's, it's just about finding mm -hmm. the right ratio to mix them and, and use them properly. And, and remember that like with Nuxt, for example, when you're doing um, server-side rendering or, or um, static sites, it's going into like single-page application when the hydration takes over, so you're actually it's working as a single page application, just you're getting all the benefits of the performance of not having to download everything straight away, et cetera. Yeah. But then it's working like a single page application. So, you know, yeah, that's, you're not really giving it up completely. So that, exactly. that, that's a good point. Always well. there. <laughs> <laughs> it's always yeah. there. Yeah. 90s rock. Yeah, that's true. We know. 90s, well, <laughs> yeah. we know. Uh, maybe the younger audience, they, they have to learn that. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, thank you for this great session. I was personally really psyched too um, when I saw that there's going to be a session about Next, and then I saw that it's someone who is actually from Next. So <laughs> it was awesome, great experience. Sure. Um, do you want to throw some closing comments? Um, any any message you want to pass to the viewers before we we conclude? Um, yeah. So if you want to like contribute to Next, etc., we'll be taking part in the Hacktoberfest. So that's going to be coming up in October. So. Um, Anyone that wants to contribute documentation or Nuxt issues or anything, we'll be creating a guideline and we'll be putting everything out soon. So watch out for that. And at any time, like you can always contribute, um, help us out. You know, everything's not perfect. So we're willing to kind of accept that we've made mistakes. So come and help us fix all those mistakes. And, um, and yeah, if you see anything that's missing, just let us know and create an issue and say, hey, there's nothing about this documented. And then we'll kind of like do our best to get to make it happen. So, yeah. Just use Nux, okay. DM me if you need anything, and have fun. <laughs> yeah, the the this is yeah this is something I mean, I know we were closing, but um, the documentation for Nux is it's this is also really well done. Like um, it's all there. You don't you don't need to go. <laughs> I'm I'm going to be honest. For a lot of technologies, you have to go to tutorials point, but <laughs> but for Nux, it's good to just go to nuxjs.org and you're you're good to go. You have everything there. So awesome job with the from the team Thank over you. there. Um, and with that, I guess we can conclude the session. Um, thank you for being here and presenting. Thank you um, so much. Maybe you'll be here thank again you next year. Thank you for having year. me. <laughs> yes, hopefully <laughs> in person on, a, on the beach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. Then you'll have your holidays here itself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, take care. That, and your holidays. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. This, um, uh, my guys uh, wish that nice holidays. Then. Huh? You were totally fun girling there. You, you could just go fun boying. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I like next. Okay, so someone from the team coming here. It's uh, yeah. Amazing. It was a, it was an opportunity. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess we have a few minutes before the next session. The next session is going to be at uh, one p.m. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll leave you guys right now and we'll be back in five. Uh, yes, yeah, Sandeep, you get it. See, Sandeep gets it. He gets the excitement. <laughs> <laughs> and this is us signing off for now and see you in five. All right.